Demain and Joinville. And as you say, we're just into the pairs now, so it's, a, it's all a little bit quieter as the boat squeezed their way around for, off the start. We see the French pair on the right there, just the boat kicking from side to side a little bit. Again, got to just sort out that rudder there, sort of that steering and get themselves moving as compared to the Dutch, who are massive, strong athletes and are really moving smoothly down, but it looks pretty close to me. I mean, in theory, shouldn't this be a one-sided uh, match-up between the pair going to the Olympics, won a, a silver medal in Lucerne, Mitchell Steenman, of course, and Rol Real Brass rode in the Dutch 8 in the 2012 Olympics. Both men raced you, actually, Greg, in that final. Shouldn't it be just a done deal for the Dutch pair? That's right. It should, it's, in, in many ways, it should be a done deal. Like you say, I raced against these two Dutch rowers at the Olympic final in London 2012. We were all in the eight together then. They've now gone out into the pair. And I think it's likely we will see that class showing through, but it's a match race. Anything can happen in a match race. It's also on the river here at Henley, and you'll see Mitchell Steenman there. His blade is quite close to the bank. There's not even a boom there. He's so close because here on the natural curves of the River Thames, this course is put in place, but the crowd can get right up close and see top-class rowing right up close and alongside the uh, the water there. So there is Edouard uh, Joinville, a former lightweight rower. He had a lot of trouble in uh, the weight of lightweights, had to get down to 70 kilos. He couldn't manage that, so he's now rowing at something like 14 stone nearly, which is around about 90 kilos, much happier. And uh, the French pair, well, I don't think they'd necessarily be worried because they did win a fantastic race against the uh, Serbian pair coming through the midpoint. So they got pace in the middle, Greg. Yeah, I know, and I know we all thought that uh, Serbian pair were going to be very strong contenders, but the French were able to hang on and keep going. Maybe it's that lightweight mentality they've still got. The lightweights never give up. <laughs> and uh, so I'm sure they won't be giving up. Although, as we say, they're up against a real class crew with Brass and Steenman. Here we see a massive man rule Brass weighing in at 16 stone four. He's just hes just an athlete. If you wanted to design someone to be a strong rower, he's the man. You can see him looking calm and quiet in the bear seat. Mitchell Steenman in front of him, gritting his teeth there and making sure he's keeping the pace going as they go out past that barrier mark. The barrier is uh, traditionally sort of the, the beginning of the end of the start, and now they're right into that middle section of the race. So it's uh, the Dutch Olympic pair. They will be going, I guess, for bronze or silver behind the New Zealand pair of Murray and Bonds. Murray and Bond training in uh, Zuse in Switzerland and pound to a penny that Eric Murray, just the French steering is, is going off slightly there, look round. Pound to a penny that Eric Murray, the world's number one rower, is watching this race on YouTube. There is the French stroke man, Edouard Joinville having to adjust his steering. Behind him is uh, Bernard Benoit Demay. Both men coached, Greg, by Daniel Fourchet, the man I think you raced in. Uh, did he beat you in Atlanta in 96 in the force? Martin, you're saying so many things, I don't know which one to pick up <laughs> first. Um, so racing for the silver medal, no one raced for the silver medal. I'm sure Grass and Steenman will be arrowing on, on the gold medal. We spoke to them in Lucerne, we had a great conversation saying, how do you go about beating that fantastic New Zealand pair? The second one I've got to pick you up on, Eric Murray, the greatest rower in the world. I think there's one or two out there who'd certainly have a few arguments with you at that. I'm not going to start naming them because I'll only get myself in trouble. And thirdly, you talked about Daniel Forger, the man with the sideburns, who used to row in the French four. They did beat us at the Atlanta Olympics, and he's done a great job working with the French pair. And uh, he was a fantastic rower in his own right. Now, now. He helped these two get up and running into the French team. That's a great shout. So uh, we look at the final of the Silver Goblets. It's the Dutch pair of Mitchell Steeman and Roel Brass out in front of uh, Benoit uh, Demay and Jeanville. Benoit Demay and Edouard Jeanville from Aviron, Grenoblois and Cirque Nautique d'Annecy in the east of France. French pair had fantastic pace against the Serbs in the middle of their race, but this uh, Dutch combination are a different ticket. And uh, they have been altitude training in Austria on a 20 kilometer lake. They uh, managed to train low on the lake and then live up high, Greg. Yeah, really interesting thing that we're so delighted that the Dutch team have chosen to come here, to chosen to come to Henley, get racing experience, and then we understand they're planning to go back to the Netherlands where they'll train and they're going to do all of their ergo training in a hypoxic chamber. 
that's effectively a chamber where they can control the atmosphere, make it feel like they're at altitude. So they're going to get the benefit of altitude training whilst also getting the benefit of racing at Henley. And the British have to go to that, you know, ugly lake up in Silveretta for the same thing. Right. Well, it's, it's an interesting choices that the coaches make. Yeah, as you say, the British team aren't here. They are in Silveretta, could perhaps be watching us if they can find enough Wi-Fi up there. Um, it's a beautiful lake in the mountains, but um, a lot of the hard work is done sitting on a rowing machine, being up at altitude, making sure get, they're getting the distance, making sure they're getting the endurance. And they, the British team will be needing to make sure they get high competition, but it'll only be internal as compared to what Steeman and Brass are getting here down at sea level racing in front of this crowd at Henley Royal Regatta. So the coach of the Dutch pair, Elon Mayhorst, will be looking with a smile on his face. I think good job done at altitude. Fantastic Lucerne Regatta where they got in front of the British. Well, effectively, they will be the, the spare pair, uh, Tarrant and Riley O'Donnell, to just win the silver medal behind the New Zealanders. And uh, they are going all the way in this race. There's no letting up, Greg. No, there's definitely no letting up. Apart from anything, like we say, they want the race practice. They want to feel the pressure. Uh, we saw them for breakfast this morning. They didn't look like they were feeling too much pressure. They were relaxed. They were in, in chatty mood. But they are in chatty mood. They're two very nice men. Yeah, Mitchell Steeman, of course, won this event two years ago in a scratch combination. Ohir Blink, who was here unsuccessfully, he lost in the Cox's Horse semi-final yesterday, had a rib injury. And so he phoned up uh, his sister's, well, fiance at the time, Julien Bain, the French Canadian, who jumped in and the two of them won the event. And uh, Royal Brass, well, he's looking round. What do you think that look was, Greg? The applause? I think it was probably just one of those little looks that says, where's the finish line? Are we going to call this up? Because they do want to use it for practice. And to me, it doesn't look like they're letting up at all. They're, they're certainly keeping the pace, whether they're going to do a sprint finish in front of the grandstand, just because for them, this effectively could be a bit of training. They could be imagining that actually Murray and Bond are alongside them now. They could be practicing for their Olympic final. To me, it looks like they are doing that, picking the pace up into the line. That's a fantastic sprint, isn't it? Beautiful speed, world glasses, power on the odometer. Massive man and... Uh, Started this Olympiad in the single skull, switched to the pair with Steenman. Lovely race from them. They will wait to the finish when this French pair have been so impressive throughout this regatta. Otherwise, Joinville in the stroke seat, Benoit Demay. But uh, there's Will Boas and Mitchell Steenman in the stroke seat, Will Boas on the right of your picture. You can see that was a tough workout, Greg.